sorry, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. What did we do before they invented cappuccino? Whatever it was, we did it a lot slower. <laughs> Charlie, I've been trying to figure this thing out all night long. I think it's defective. You might want to stop production. Just power it on there. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I spent half the night trying to figure this out. Kids play with them for hours. Well, that's the biggest request of the year. Hmm? Don't worry, sir. Kids want you to deliver the game, not show them how to play it. You know, Charlie? I think that just might be our problem. What do you mean? I'm going to show you something I've shown to no one. I don't want you to mention it to any of the other elves. So cover your ears and close your eyes. Okay. Looks like a Christmas ornament. I wish. You see that green there? That represents all those people that believe in the Christmas spirit. And the red, well, that represents the people who are losing faith. And the white, White represents all those people who don't even believe we exist. Why don't they do that? You know, the world is becoming a lot less real, Charlie. I mean, our entire operation is pretty unbelievable when you think about it. I never employs the children all over the world in a couple of hours. You can't blame people for doubting. But it's magic, duh. If people stop believing, we have a real problem, Charlie. This workshop is powered by Christmas spirit. If that graph turns white, we're going to have to shut down. What is this place? What are you looking for? Can we help you with something? This is going to this is gonna sound silly. There's this business guy down in the States who is suing Santa Claus. He's suing Santa Claus? <laughs> I know. I know. It's some sort of, uh, like... Publicity stuff. Anyway, they hired me to go up to the North Pole and serve a summons on Santa Claus. You came all the way up here just for that? Well, and I, I didn't think I'd find a toy manufacturing operation out here in the middle of nowhere. What are you guys making? Like, illegal knockoffs? There is nothing illegal about this operation. Right. Don't worry, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just going to tell them that I came up to the North Pole and couldn't find Santa Claus. But you did. Excuse me? I am Santa Claus. Right. Right in the field. Got Okay. Under the laws of the state of New York, you can serve. Cereal. Sweetheart, you can't wear that to school. I don't have school today, Daddy. It's a teacher work day. I'm going to the courthouse with you. Oh, it's Friday. Of course. Good morning, Sherman. Good morning. Hi, Lauren. Lily, you look beautiful. Are you a princess? No, I'm a fairy. Well, then where are your wings, huh? I don't have them yet, but I can do magic. Hey, honey, maybe your magic can help Lauren get the galaxy up and running. Hey, now, Rome wasn't built in a day. That's true, Lauren. Because if you had been the architect of Rome, that city would still be under construction. <laughs> to Rome. To Oh, here's an idea, sweetheart. How would you like to stay here and help Lauren in the garage instead of going to the boring courthouse? You could be a mechanic in training. No. Dad, you pass. Lily, I'm not just your dad's mechanic, but I'm also an awesome babysitter. Please. Okay, fine, but you cannot wear that dress. But, Dad, it's pretty. It is pretty. Hi, those are the courtroom, sweetheart. Do they work? I try to. Um, if I can find any clients. How are you getting sad about money? I don't get sad about money. Hey, listen, there's a little waiting area outside the clerk's office. I'm going to ask you just to stay there while I go inside, okay? I'll be really quick. Okay, just wait right here, okay? If you need anything, let 
nice to meet you. Don't get me, okay? Okay, thanks. We'll see you. Okay, thanks, you. Uh, that's my daughter, Lily. Um, she's just going to wait right there while I go inside. If she needs anything, just please let me know. <laughs> yeah, honey, just call away. I'll be right back, okay? for ruining Christmas. That's stupid. I agree. <laughs> but what are you doing here? Fairies don't usually hang out in courthouses. But not if we're fairy yet. I still need my wings. <laughs> don't worry, sweetie. You'll get them. My name is Ellie Shea. Pleasure to meet you. You brought me a fairy tea party set last year. I remember. And Monkey Hunt. That's my favorite game. <laughs> you really are Santa. And you really are Lily. <laughs> but tell me, what are you doing in a courthouse? I'm waiting for my daddy. He's in a meeting. I'm not supposed to leave the office, but when I saw you, I had to say hi. <laughs> and I'm so glad you did. If you need a lawyer, my dad's a lawyer. And if you're being sued, he can help you. He needs clients. Well, the truth is that I'm already meeting someone here who's supposed to represent me. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lily, honey, what did I tell you about staying in the waiting room, huh? Okay, I'm going to say hi. Santa, be my dad, Michael. Uh, Santa, hi. Nice to meet you. Honey, do me a favor. Go upstairs, grab your book bag and your jacket, and come directly back here, okay? Go, 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 go. <laughs> Sorry about that. She has a really wild imagination. I hope she didn't offend you. No, of course not. I don't mind being called Santa. <laughs> I'm good. Thanks for hanging out with my daughter. Uh, what is your name? Chris. Chris. Michael. Very nice to meet you. Although I must say, you really do look a lot like Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly hope so. <laughs> you know, I thought of shaving, but I think it would disappoint a lot of people. Well, especially around this time of year, you know, the holidays must be a busy time for you. Yes, it is. It's my busiest time. <laughs> you know, many people think I only work one day a year, but so not true. Delivering is the easy part. Managing the workshop is a full-time job. Yeah, right. Okay, well, it was very nice to meet you. And Lily tells me you're a lawyer. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've been practicing for two years. Have you had many clients? Well, you know, it's always a struggle to get established. I'm ready, Daddy. Well, there you are, honey. Okay, we gotta get going, okay? Uh, again, the pleasure for me. Let's go this way. Uh, you know, uh, I'm looking for a lawyer. Really? A man sued him. He makes Santa ruin Christmas. Uh, it's true. I have a class action suit against me. Your name is Chris Pringle, and you live at the North Pole. This is 
serious? The court accepted these? Oh, I'm afraid so. So you can see, I, I need a good lawyer. Daddy, what house is it? Uh, well, I have to look this over. Oh, great! How about over lunch? I might. Uh, uh, hey. Hello. Oh, Barney. <laughs> Sorry for dragging you all the way down here, but I've just hired Lily's father, Michael, to represent me. Thanks, anyway. Put Charlie on the phone. The plaintiff's claim that you are responsible for severe emotional distress. I know. Right there. Braxton Bennett is practically advertising for support for his lawsuit. He's a multi-millionaire. How much emotional distress can he have? Apparently enough to warrant a class action lawsuit. He's from a rich family that made their fortune in sporting goods. His parents were never around, and despite his best efforts to contact you during the holidays, he was always left without the Christmas gifts he wanted. Stacy, the disappointment was so devastating that he has spent years in therapy and feels children should not be exposed to such a misleading myth as Santa Claus. Sounds more like a poor little rich kid who's frustrated by his parents' neglect. Braxton Bennett always was a troubled boy, and the things he asked for were way beyond my abilities. Wait, the letters. Do you happen to... Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the space to archive every letter that we've received, so I don't have them anymore. In the complaint, he says that he asked for a yacht, lion cubs, and a cannon. So clearly you never received those requests. Oh, I received them. You tried putting a lion cub in the sleigh. Apparently, a lot of people had the same experience as him. They asked for things and never received them. But Chris, you seem like a, a very smart, very sweet man. And obviously, the legend of Santa Claus means an awful lot to you. You cannot go into a trial and perjure yourself to save his honor. It, it, it's a crime. I have no intention of lying. This whole thing is a publicity stunt. He wants to prove that I don't exist. He wants to have me removed from everything that has to do with Christmas. Now, if that happens, I'm out of a job. There are other jobs. Not for me. Will you take my case? As an attorney, I would advise you to just forget this whole thing. Do not show up at the trial. Just go home to wherever you're from. Okay, believe me. I can't do that. <laughs> I've already accepted service of the complaint. A complaint filed against Santa Claus. Yes. You're serious. You really want to go through with this? We're all answerable to the law. And I want you as my lawyer. The law always was your passion, which is why you were so persistent in your request for a legal beagle as a child. Legal beagle? How do you know about that? <laughs> the dog dressed as a lawyer that says things like, I object, I want a sidebar, and I call my next witness. When you pulled a little string, I loved that dog. <laughs> you and Johnny Cochran. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but my mother gave that to me for Christmas. Really? Well, let's make a wager. And you call her and ask her. If she says that she gave it to you, well, then you can forget all about my case. But if she says that I gave it to you, then you have to represent me. Go ahead. Call her. No, I'm not, I'm not going to call her. Because you know I'm right. This is really going forward, huh? Great. So, are you sure you can pay me? Of course I can pay you. Okay. I'll do it. Really, honey? Come on. We got to go. Are we going back to the courthouse? Uh, no, I, we are not. Daddy has to go home. I have a lot of work to do. Chris, uh, where are you staying? I can drop you off. Uh, well, I, uh, because you don't have a place to stay. You're kidding me. You can stay at our house. We have a spare room. Well, I think that's a wonderful idea. But, but I don't want to impose. What does that mean? It means I don't want to be a problem. Say it's never a problem. Right, Daddy? <laughs> You don't have a place to stay, but you're sure you can pay me. Yep.
Yeah, come in. Gina, my favorite lawyer. I hope you're going to wear that in court. My PR people are going to be out in force, and I want you looking very photogenic. Mr. Bennett, you are going to be very pleased. Fifty more people have joined the lawsuit. Excellent. Just one tiny little hiccup. I don't like hiccups, Gina. Well, they're not really even a hiccup, then. Then what? Somebody up at the North Pole who, um... <laughs> actually calls himself Chris Crane. Accepted service of this complaint. So we think he's going to show up in court. What? I knew it was a stupid idea to send a process server up to the North Pole. We had to attempt delivery to show due diligence. We wouldn't have been able to file otherwise. And this idiot actually found somebody living up there? Somebody who has a toy manufacturing operation and claims to be so Now, this could be very good for us. Yes, before I was just going to sue Santa and have a no show, but now I'm actually going to have a full fledged nutcase who's swearing he is the Claus man in person. Can you make him look bad on the stand? He's a single man living with eight little people. It's like a reality show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm probably skirting child labor laws, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is good. This is very good. The worse, the better. Because we are swinging public opinion against Santa. Take a look at this. Look at this. People are eating this up. Santa's evil because I can get what I want for Christmas. Now, wait till they see you grilling this Chris Kringle lunatic. <laughs> I want to show you something, Dina. This is a new prototype. Does she look a little bit like a frozen supermodel? So we have the design details, but she is going to replace Santa. That's a great idea. You prove once and for all that Santa is an outdated myth. All those poor kids are going to need a replacement. And from what? Offering Santa Snow, the lovely fairy who brings happiness and sporting goods to every boy and girl. I tell you, Mr. Bennett, it takes great courage to break an age-old tradition. Well, you know, the time of the old fat man in red is over. The future belongs to the sleek I can't believe you're representing Santa Claus. I'm representing Chris. Same thing. Uh, aren't you excited? You're going to be the lawyer who saves Christmas. It's just a silly little frivolous lawsuit that will be dismissed before anybody even hears about it. Hey, get your nose out of the law books. Everybody is talking about this. It's all over the internet, television, and a lot of folks agree with Braxton Bennett. Yeah, do you? Were you ever disappointed by Santa? No. He gave me my first set of socket wrenches. Your dad probably took an old set of his, wrapped it up, and threw it under the tree. No, they were toy wrenches made of plastic. So you believe in Santa Claus? Michael, <laughs> look. He's playing rock, paper, scissors with your daughter. <laughs> See? He's so yeah. sweet. <laughs> I am making a huge mistake here. You just have to believe. I don't have the reputation as the go-to guy. If you're nuts. What am I going to have next? The Easter Bunny? Leprechaun? You know, lose this case right here. I'd end my career before it even starts. Hello? Hey, Michael Sherman. Yes? Is Chris Pringle with you? Yes, he's here. May I ask who's calling, please? Oh, this is Charlie, Santa's head elf. Right. Hold on, please. Chris, phone call for you. Thank you. Do you mind if I take this outside? Be my guest. Oops. Who is that? Uh, so, Harry, it's the head elf from the North Pole, and his name is Charlie. Incredible. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Although he does go to great lengths to keep up the facade. Do you ever think he might actually be Santa Claus? Yeah, and I'm Peter Pan. And why are you representing him? Because I need the money. I don't know what Praxis lawyers can do to him on the stand, so he doesn't. And that guy needs a defense lawyer more than anybody I've ever met. Charlie, the new lawyer. He's pretty convincing. Honey, honey, let Chris make his phone call in private, okay? Did you beat him in rock, paper, scissors? Yeah. All right, that's my girl. But I don't need Barney. Barney researched this much. 
The guy's barely out of law school. He's going to fall apart like a dragon Christmas tree. Charlie, when I met Michael, my Santa senses started tingling. Michael's the one I want. Now, trust me. How's the workshop? The joint's turning more white every day. My Cabraltron is making funny noises. I think it's on its last legs. I knew we should have gotten that extended warranty. I'm coming up. Hmm. No, sir. This case is too important. But the Fabolotron adds the fun to every toy that we make. Without it, I might as well be giving the children building materials. You can help Michael prepare the case while I fix the Fabolotron. Is that an order, sir? Afraid so, Charlie. Really? what you're selling, but I don't want to buy any candy so that the school band can go to an amusement park, okay? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> there seems to be some confusion. I don't sell candy. <laughs> I give it away. All right, let's go. Wait, wait. wait. Chris sent me. Get up to the North Pole on urgent business. Here. Dear Michael, I hereby authorize Charlie Elfkin, that's me, to act on my behalf until I return. You are an elf. Sure am. That's amazing. No, it's not. And no, you aren't. Get out of here, okay? I've had it. It's been notarized by the state of New York. No, it isn't. I just looked at it. Look again. I... OMG! Is that spaghetti? Look. I love spaghetti! This is crazy. <laughs> Chris will return just as soon as he's fixed the Fibrolatron. Mmm! Oh, that's good. Got a retainer check for you. <laughs> so I did some research on Braxton Bennett. Terrific. Will this thing be wrapped by Christmas? We need to have the spirit by that. The spirit? Have you been drinking, Charlie? <laughs> no! <laughs> My gosh, no! Just that cases this big usually take a few months. Not an option. We need to find a way to disprove Braxton Bennett. It, it's not just Braxton Bennett. It's a class action lawsuit. There are lists of names of people who are accusing Chris of ruining the Christmas. Research approved. Sandy did nothing of the sort. I agree. Me too. You guys aren't helping. Okay, and, and Charlie, this is this is not working. Okay, I, I need to speak with Chris right now, or this case is over. Oh. Hope there's nothing breakable in the garage. Hey, what? Are you okay? Oh, holy and I. Eating me at a house in home. <laughs> Charlie, he's more than that. I gave him power of attorney. Did you get it? Charlie, Charlie can double pick his hair. I'll be right there, honey. This check you gave me? It's not going to bounce, is it? I swear on Frosty's magic hat. <laughs> this is going to be a beautiful car when it's finished. Forward Galaxy. How long have you been working on it? springtime. It's got a lot of problems, but uh, I'm only working on it part-time, you know, at a tech job. I'm just not doing this as a favor. Well, I can tell it's a labor of love. Yeah, it uh, belongs to Michael's father. She's been sitting here for years, so I thought, why not fix it up? I almost have the engine running exactly as I want it, but, uh, I don't know, the tires and the paint job are a problem. It's beautiful work. Y you know about engines? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, you've been paying for this out of your own pocket? Michael's still paying off his late wife's medical bills, but as soon as he gets his practice up and running, he'll, uh, he'll pay me back. How long have you been in love with him? Is that obvious? Apparently not to him. <laughs> you know, in my many, many trips across this planet, I've noticed one universal truth. Men are really stupid when it comes to love. You really need to tell him. No, no. He wouldn't be interested in me. Michael dated all the girly girls in high school, 
Lily's mom is the most beautiful of them all. He doesn't want a girl who drives the truck and can change her transmission. So what happens when the galaxy is finished? Nothing. He'll probably be grateful, but he'll never see me as more than a friend. I'm a firm believer that the truth comes out eventually. <laughs> oh, chimney soot. The Fibolatron is acting up again. I gotta go. Okay. Now, the guy is... Where's Chris? He's... He was right there. The elf just broke my grandmother's chair. I must be out of my mind. Why? Why? I'm, I'm representing Chris Kringle. Yep. And because of that, your daughter is dreaming of sugar plum fairies. It could be worse. <laughs> he did pay up front. So. <laughs> your daughter is best for Lily. I have a, a pasta-loving elf sleeping in my guest bedroom. I'm not so sure that social services would agree with you. He's a diminutive, well-paying client. <laughs> True. <laughs> oh. Sometimes like these, I really miss Andy. She had a way of making sense out of all that crazy. She was an amazing woman. Impossible to replace. I should get going. <laughs> Cinnamon. Santa's favorite. I figured his picture is on the box. He is public domain. For some unknown reason, the judge put this trial on the fast track so that it's going to be finished before Christmas. I had a feeling he would. <sighs> Look, Charlie, a lot of people in town are siding with Braxton Bennett. Uh, they've even started a, a dump Santa campaign. Now, obviously it's just a joke, but it's starting to pick up steam. For example, uh, a number of the malls have fired their Santas. Oh, that is going too far. I gotta call the big guy. What? Cross the line now. I'm coming back there. A jury rates the Fribolatron. She'll have to monitor it. Right. Uh, I'll call you if it starts to overheat again. Uh, Charlie. Charlie. Hey, we got a case to prepare. Charlie, where are you going? We got business to... Why did they fire the mall Santas? Where did you come from? I, I know the, the North Pole, but... Are, are you two like the same person or something? What possible reason could there be for denying children a chance to visit Santa? People say that they're, they're doing the kids a favor by preventing them from being disappointed on Christmas morning. I have never disappointed any child. <laughs> okay, let, let's just assume for a moment that everything you've told me is the honest truth. What is Braxton Bennett's deal? Braxton Bennett already had every toy that money could buy. The one thing that he needed the most was not mine to give. His parents' love. You understand what I'm saying? Actually, I, I think I do. And, and if I could convey that to a jury? Well, you can and you will. But do you still have it? Have what? What the legal beagle. <laughs> I chose right, didn't I? You don't give up, do you? Well, you do still have it. Yeah, I still have it. Well, come on, tell me how it inspired you to become a lawyer. <laughs> well, if you must know, uh, my wife, Andy, died from cancer a few years ago. And I was in law school at the time, so I quit so I can help take care of her. And after, um, Lily was just a toddler, so I had to take care of her. I couldn't go back to school at that time. It was a really hard time for me. Lily was pretty much my only reason for living. And then uh, I was at my mom's house and we were cleaning out the attic. And I found my big old beagle. <laughs> and suddenly all my dreams came rushing back to me. And I decided right then and there, no matter how long it takes, I'm going to do whatever I have to to become a lawyer. You see, it's my job to remind you of your dreams and to give you a little gentle kick to the backside when you need it. For instance, my Christmas gift to you this year is to tell you to get your life moving again. What are you talking about? 
but you've been at an emotional standstill since you lost your wife. Chris, <laughs> which is perfectly natural, Andy was wonderful, and you and Lily loved her deeply. Yes, but life moves on, and so must you. And it's no disrespect to her memory. Ah. Uh... Just like the ordinary reindeer, they'll never fly. You know, <clears throat> we have to prepare for tomorrow. Okay, so uh, did you or did you not know Braxton as a child? Yes. Good. Okay, so uh, tell me about those meetings. I never met him. You never met him? Never had a, a conversation with him? Never went to dinner with his family? Nothing? That's correct. Uh, Sherman residence? It's spending out feathers and playing club days! The ribbon rot! The scooter animator is popped! What should I do? Touch nothing! I'm on my way back! Okay. What, what, what's happening? Uh, the is on the blink again. I gotta go. Wait, where are you going? He's the only one who knows the right merriment setting. <laughs> Everybody wants to dump us. Hi, Santa. <laughs> Where are you off to? <laughs> Where's our Charlie? Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. Would you sit here for a moment, please? That's going to be with the opposing counsel, and enthusiasm. Uh, ready to get this trial underway. Mm -hmm. Don't you have a team of lawyers on this? Bad form to bring everybody into chambers. How's your team doing? Fine. I'm fine. It's just you? Just me. Huh. Well, this is going to be like catching fish in a barrel. Sermon and Smiger. Sit. I'm not going to waste time. The reason I called you in is because we seem to have a high profile trial on our hands. I hate high profile trials. You're not going to make this into a spectacle, understood? The defendant is being sued because he allegedly caused irreparable emotional distress. And the fact that he's named a Santa Claus in the complaint is irrelevant. Yes. Chris Kringle, Your Honor. No matter. You will treat him like any other defendant in my courtroom. And I don't want to hear about elves or candy canes or flying reindeer. My courtroom will not be made into a fantasy land. You got it? Yes, yes sir. Good. Well, let's get through this thing as quickly as possible. <laughs> in front of Judge Smith. No. These nicknames pick up very little patience and despise his incompetence. Good luck. See you in court. Thank you. 
Okay. Uh, let me guess. Charlie has left the building. <laughs> I needed him up north. He relates to the elves better. I needed him to quell Christmas to spirit. He'll be back. Quell the Christmas dispirit. See those lawyers out there? They want to eat us alive. Michael, my reindeer can fly. Because no matter what anybody else believes, they believe the impossible. You can do this. You were born for it. Rough day. Charlie came home this afternoon and went straight to bed. Oh, poor Charlie. He had to the Christmas dispirit. What? Uh, never mind. He's little. Metabolism probably wears him out. I notice he's a lot of sugar. I wonder he always crashes. He told me when he dreams, he goes to the candy cane forest where the chocolate stream runs. You know how hard it is to find a jury that believes in the Easter Bunny or even likes the movie Harvey? You ready for the trial? I think so. The first few witnesses, anyway. I want to go to court and watch. Oh, honey, I've got a babysitter for you tomorrow. Well, I could take her. Don't you have work? It's Christmas vacation, remember? Uh, what do you say, Lily? You want to go cheer on Team Santa? Yeah. Okay, honey, you have to go to bed then, okay? Can Lauren read me a story and check me out? Well, that's up to Lauren. Sure. We'll leave your dad to make the eggnog, too. Spiked. Mm-hmm. So what was the story du jour tonight? Let me guess, it was uh, Little Fairy's Wild Ride. Nope, the night before Christmas. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Can I ask you something? Sure, but Lily? No. Do you think I'm in an emotional holding pattern? Who told you that? Just wondering. Michael, I think that you lost your wife not that long ago. Is that your polite way of saying yes? Yes, I am. I think that you hold too much inside and that you would be a lot happier if you opened up to someone. Thank you for babysitting so much these last few weeks. I, when this case is over, I promise I will make it up to you. It's my pleasure. And thank you for sticking around the last couple of years. Because I know there's some times where it could not have been pleasant. Michael, I want to be around. I should probably get back to work. I'll get back to Chris. Yeah, I'll um, thank you too. Start with your weakest witness and build up to your strongest, like some kind of grand finale. Jury fatigue, sir. I have a hundred witnesses who are ready to testify that they have been emotionally stunted because of Santa. Can I put them all on the stand? Because it would bore the jury to tears. Besides, my team's found that a lot of the witnesses are a little, um, weird. Weird how? Emotionally stunted. See? The case has merit. Well, a couple of the witnesses also blamed the Easter Bunny for giving them egg allergies. Oh. And you know those little heart conversation candies on Valentine's Day? Yeah. Another witness actually converses with her. I'd rather keep her off the stand. Yeah, I see your point. Okay, well, you do what you think is best. We're not to worry, sir. Our first witness today is going to kill him. Prepare to be dazzled, sir. All right. <laughs> Doctor, we appreciate you making time to be here with us today. Why 
the record, you are the inventor of the breakthrough vaccine against malaria. Isn't that correct? That's correct. And you've been shortlisted for the Nobel Prize. Yes, that's also correct. Amazing. You are at the top of your profession. How's your personal life? I've had a hard time fitting in. A brilliant and successful man who can't fit in? Do you know when that started? When I was 10 years old, I begged Santa for a video game console. All the cool kids were playing these sports games, and I thought if I had a top-of-the-line console, they would want to be my friends. Did you get the console? No. And so no one ever wanted to come over after school and play with me. I never made any friends. It was like living in exile. My deepest sympathies. Unfortunately, there is no vaccine for emotional distress. Dr. Evans. Dr. Evans, um, what did you receive for Christmas, the year that you asked Santa for a video game console? Uh, a microscope. You did? Well, I can understand how that would be upsetting. Not many ten-year-olds have much of an interest in microscopes. <laughs> I certainly didn't. Do you recall the first time you ever saw a red blood cell? Junior high. My brother found a dead bird in the yard, and I looked at the blood and feathers under the microscope. The microscope that Santa brought you? Yes. If Santa hadn't brought you that microscope, isn't it possible that you may never have developed an interest in science and cellular research? An interest that led you to the development of a vaccine for malaria? Objection, Your Honor. Oh, no, no, I would like to get an answer. It's true. I never thought about that way before. Well, thank you, Dr. Evans. No further questions, Your Honor. When is Daddy coming home? Soon. He has to wrap some things up at the courthouse. He was good today. Yeah, he was. Why are those people mad at Santa? Do you think Santa wanted to hurt them? He'd never do that. No, well, we know that, but sometimes people need to blame someone, and those people chose Santa. My daddy told them all they were wrong. Hey, let's let him relax when he comes in, okay? What's wrong? Don't ask. <laughs> hey. You did so good today. Thank you, Angel. Where's Chris? Uh, he had some production line problem. They said that... <laughs> Charlie would cover for him. Uh, he can eat all the cookies as far as I'm concerned. As long as he pays. It's way past your bedtime. Okay, Daddy. Night, Lauren. Night, Lauren. After Dr. Evans, it all went downhill. Ten witnesses called him a fraud under oath. They're wrong. Smiger had the jury eating out of her hands today. You'll get your day. How? Hey, what, what am I going to prove? I mean, do you honestly believe I'm going to be able to convince 12 rational people that Chris is actually... Santa Claus. Yes. You have more faith than I do. I need, I need more. I need something concrete, something like pictures of the North Pole, a, a reindeer with a red nose, or I'd even take an elf right now. I heard that. No, a real elf, not a, a pint-sized eating machine with a funny hat. He can't do that, Michael. Can't, can't do what? Reveal the Christmas magic. It would ruin everything. Well, I got nothing Call the pole. See if I can pull some strings. Can you get some of the elves to check the archives for any kind of records of naughty and niceless? We don't really keep archives, Charlie. Really? You know that. I'll have a look in the recycling. Let's see if I can find any leftover lists. I'll see what I can do. Thanks, sir. Don't worry about today. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Oh, the place. It's a good place to avoid the media. Oh, personally, I love the media. Would you like anything? Oh, yeah, I'm particular about what I eat. Um, but, and drink. Um, <clears throat> we missed this. Thank you. Just one name. It's my client against yours. And, and my client is a lot more sympathetic. I, I can prove damages, loss of income, not to mention violations to his First Amendment rights. Doubling down on Kringle's character. It's risky. So everything you've argued today just goes out the window and it all comes down to... Belief. I know. Billy? In the interest of full disclosure... Absolutely. Rad Child Psychiatric Hospital, admitted in 1972. He even went by the name Chris Kringle. No, just take a look at his face. You can see it's him. Didn't your client tell you about that one incident? Tisk, tisk. You're representing a certifiably insane fraud. Just don't want to put him on the stand. Michael, Michael, Michael. Let me give you some off-the-record advice. You're smart, you know how to play to a jury, and you have a bright future. If you drop this case. I am the attorney of record. And file a motion to be relieved. Credibility is everything. Walk away while you still have yours. So he's crazy. No more so than Braxton Bennett. You and I both know Braxton Bennett didn't expect somebody to show up actually claiming to be Santa Claus. This it was a good faith attempt by my client to dispel a myth which he believes does great harm to children. Chris is remarkable. My, my daughter loves him. Is he worth throwing away your future for? No wonder you don't like the press. You're a laughing stock. The public thinks you're crazy. Lose this case and believe me, every freak show in town will be knocking on your door and wanting you to represent them. It doesn't have to be that way. Think about it, Michael. You can have a very bright future. Maybe even with us. Don't throw it all away. First the myth. When to bed the world a budding, when's the time for orchard rubbing? Yet the fruit were scarce worth peeling, were it not for stealing, stealing. <laughs> Fairies do? Well, I don't know much about fairies, but I know that our reindeer can fly because they believe in the impossible when others give up. Can we fly? Like eagles, but most of them don't believe it, which is why we've had the same team for so many years. Hey, guys. Hey, <laughs> so I was just reading this story about fairies. That's nice, honey. Why don't you go upstairs and get ready for bed? Huh? Can you read me the rest of the book before bed? Absolutely. Good night, Santa. Good night. Love you, Daddy. Love you, Tishmere. Love you, Daddy. Hey. So, uh, how did your meeting with Miss Smiger go? Not well. They're about to drop a bombshell. They found your photographs and your admissions papers to Bradshaw Psychiatric Center. It's not what you think. Please, enlighten me. All right. I, I was there, but not for the reasons you think. They had a children's award that needed my help. And the only way I could get in was to be admitted. So you became a patient to help kids? But they didn't have a chimney. But they didn't have a chimney, of course not. Chris, you betrayed my confidence. You deliberately did not bring this up because you knew there was no way I would take this case if I knew you had been institutionalized. Those kids were being deprived of all holiday celebrations. It was the only way I could think of helping them. I can't 
go on with this charade any longer. I'm resigning as your counsel. What? You can't. They are portraying me as crazy. And guess what? The man I'm supposed to be representing is certifiably crazy. After this trial, you get to go back to the North Pole or wherever, and you get to live your life. I have to stay here and deal with the fallout. My credibility is destroyed. I don't believe that. I don't believe you. I had a hard time getting clients beforehand. But now, nobody wants to be represented by the Santa Claus lawyer because everybody knows that Santa Claus does not exist, including me. I understand. Chris, I have a young daughter. I have student loans. I have bills up to here and a career to consider. These aren't just responsibilities that I can, I can walk away from. I don't want to ruin your life. Chris... Stop. You don't have to go. I'm not, I'm not kicking you out. It's better this way. Don't worry, Michael. It'll we'll be okay. My apologies to Lily for leaving without saying goodbye. Give my best. to me. All she could talk about is how much she misses Chris and Charlie. I'm hoping this will help. She loves decorating the tree. I have to tell you, I don't think you made the right decision, Michael. Well, don't try to make me feel guilty. We've been through this. I know, but come on, you were making progress. No, I wasn't. <sighs> Lily, honey, come on down. I have a surprise for you, sweetheart. Lily? Welcome to my life. What do you expect? You dump Santa Claus. <laughs> Thank you. Michael, I don't understand how you could just quit. I had no choice. The man is legally insane. They have the paperwork to prove it. I can't just throw away my career. You could still win this. No, I can't. This town refuses to acknowledge Santa. It's a sure loss, and I'm doing this to protect her. Are you? I mean, it doesn't look like it. Okay, fine. I'll be the bad guy, but I know I'm right. I disagree. I think that if you quit on Chris, then that jury will too. I quit because... You quit because you were afraid. How can you doubt that he's Santa Claus? Lord, I would love to believe in him. I really would. And I'd love to believe that the world is a wonderful, happy, caring, and generous place. But it's not. Oh, and Santa Claus is just another one of those fantasies that we create to help us get through life. When you think about it, the story doesn't really make much sense. Well, what about love? I mean, that doesn't make much sense if you think about it. Someone giving up everything for someone else. I looked it up in the dictionary once, and it, it doesn't begin to describe a millionth of what it really means. That's because our brains don't understand it. Our hearts do. It's not the same thing. Well, I think it is. And until you realize that logic and reason and science don't define everything in this world, you're going to be living half a life. Sweetheart, do you want to help me hang some ornaments on the tree? Sure. All right. Thank you. It really looks like him. It does. Why don't you believe in Santa Claus? Oh. Why did he leave? He was supposed to read me the rest of the poem. He thought it was best that he leave. Although he did say he was sorry. Honey, Santa never meant to hurt you. I know. What is he doing in your room all that time? Yeah, yeah, we can definitely do that. I have some envelopes in the, the cabinet right by the microwave. Okay.
visitors till 10 30. Oh, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not here to visit. Okay. I'm, sorry, I'm not going to ask a few questions. I, I thought this was a, a psychiatric hospital. It was once. Now it's a retirement center. Do you know if there are any old records from that time? There was a patient here once called Chris Kringle. Are you serious? I, I know it sounds strange, but it's really important. Do, do you know any doctors or nurses who used to work here? Sir, you have yourself a Merry Christmas before I call security. I know Chris Kringle. Excuse me? He helped save Christmas for the children here. Uh, how do you know Mr. Kringle, ma'am? I was a nurse here when you used to visit. Oh, oh I remember the magic. <laughs> do you mind if I ask you a few questions? No, sure, go ahead. How are you? Are, are you sure it's filed under K? I filed it myself. No, why? Guess I thought it might come in handy someday. There's an envelope. And a photo. yourself a, a peanut butter cup or something. We're just going to talk out here. I'm sorry. I doubted you. I'm sorry. I you made the best decision for your future. I was wrong. You, of all people, deserve to be defended. And it didn't hurt. This was dropped down my chin. <laughs> Charlie, he's the best for a reason. I went to the hospital. It's now a retirement home. But I met Cindy Hawking. She was a nurse who was there when you were there. And she remembers you. Cindy. <laughs> really? And she told me that you helped every one of those kids keep their Christmas spirit. They made these kids crazy by taking away everything that makes childhood wonderful. I also found that while there is a record of you being admitted, there is no record of you being discharged. Now, Cindy is willing to testify that the day after Christmas, you just disappeared. So you're saying you have a case. And just in time for Christmas. I, I just, I wish I had something to nail Braxton Bennett on. He's got ulterior motives. I can feel it. I don't know. Maybe all this mess is for the best. Yes. Made me start coming to terms with who I am. You're Santa Claus. I failed, Michael. No, you didn't fail. You changed the lives of some very unhappy children in a hospital a long time ago. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. Kids all over the world need you. I need you. You made me believe. And if you can change me, Chris, then what? You can change the world. time in months. I feel like a whole morning again. <laughs> so do I. Well then, let's <laughs> So does that mean you're my lawyer again? If you'll let me. Well, of course. Well, come back. <laughs> Don't worry, no, listen, listen to me. I've got this whole thing figured out. Santana Snow needs to be a fairy. It doesn't mean that she can't live in a tropical paradise or someplace good because the kids are going to want to send her letters. Yeah. <laughs> right now, we want to launch this thing by the spring. So set up the wave right after Christmas because today we are going to put the final nail into Santa's coffin. Let me call you right back. How you doing, little lady? Good. So you, uh, buying something or what? My dollar doesn't work. Oh, well, yeah, swap me for a brand new one, right? Mm -hmm. What? Do you like hers? Yes. Yes, I do. I know her. I know her name. It's a And she brings good boys and girls. Sporty goods. Christmas. 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 
Well, you'll find out next Christmas if you're good. So Santa is like Santa. Better than Santa. What does she look like? I'm not supposed to know about this, but because you love fairies, I'm going to give you a sneak peek. from her, so I was hoping maybe she'd show up today. Yeah. Dad, Where's Sporting Goods? Why'd you hear that, honey? A man in his room said that a fairy named Santa Snow was going to bring Sporting Goods to kids next Christmas. He said you were replacing Santa, though. He even drove me at all. Honey, take a look around the courtroom and tell me if you see that man in here. Looking for... Did you get... Is that people? Okay. The blue shirt? Mm-hmm. Okay, sweetheart. I want you to sit at the very end of this aisle, okay, and sort of keep yourself hidden. I'm going to ask you to come up here and answer some questions for me. You just tell me exactly what you just told me right now. Okay. As you can see from the pixelation of this 1972 photo, there are no hard edges or boundaries on these photos like we saw in the other pictures that were clearly photoshopped. Which means that this reindeer hovering or flying outside of the second story window is in fact real. Uh, no, sir, Your Honor. I would like to call uh, one more witness, if I may. Lily Sherman. Objection, Your Honor. This is the counsel's daughter who's coming to the stand. What possible relevance could she have? Mr. Sherman. Your Honor, I assure you that this witness has testimony which is extremely relevant as she has some new evidence which has recently come to light that the court needs to hear. In that case, proceed, Mr. Sherman, but you better not be wasting this court's time. The defense would like to call Lily Sherman to the stand. Mr. Randy, you and the Bible, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it? Miss Sherman, what were you doing today, right before court? I got a peanut butter cup from the snack room. Was there anyone inside the snack room with you today? That man? Let the record show that the witness has identified Mr. Braxton Bennett. Noted. Continue, Counselor. Miss Sherman, what did you and Mr. Bennett talk about while in the snack room? He told me about a fairy named Santana Snow that would bring sporting goods to good boys and girls. Really? He said she was better than Santa Claus. Better than Santa Claus? Hmm. Have you ever actually seen this Santana Snow? Yeah, he showed me a star. I'd like to remind the court that Mr. Braxton Bennett made his fortune in sporting goods and has unwittingly revealed to Ms. Sherman the real reason behind this entire lawsuit. Not for retribution, for emotional distress, but to replace Santa in the hearts of everyone for his own financial gain. I have a letter here, written by Miss Sherman to Santa Claus. I would like to present this as evidence. And if the court pleases, I'd like to have Miss Sherman read this out loud. I'll allow it. Miss Christmas, you may not 
about to remember this because of people in our year. Every year, you give me the most wonderful things. But this year for Christmas, I just want to give you my love. I want you to know that I still believe in you. And I know you'll fly again. Just like the reindeer, you believe in the impossible. And everyone else gives up. And so do I. Don't worry. I'll still be going to stay on the next list. Thank you for always caring about me. Love. Nothing. qualified a team of attorneys all that this case has proven is that Chris Kringle brought love to every person he met because that is what Santa does Santa is good Santa is alive he exists in the heart of every single one of us who believes if you find him guilty, you are condemning the very best that the human spirit has to offer this world. Defense rises. Are you sure about that, counsel? Absolutely. You're a witness. for you to go to bed. Okay. Is this Something tells me Santa is not going to skip our house. So let's get you to bed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can really just switch it off, huh? Yeah. She's just the right age. I wanted to get you something really special for Christmas, but I didn't get it finished in time. Is it what I think it is? Uh, everything's done but the paint job. I got I got the first coat of primer on, and then I had to leave for the courthouse. And... That, that's fine. Can I, can I see it, please? Yeah, um... Galaxy. 
And since we owned a galaxy, I thought I was the richest kid on Earth. look great. But he didn't bring you anything. Yes, he did, honey. Yes, he did. Gold Crown Christmas Week continues tomorrow morning at night on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries.